Yes, hello. hello. I am from Mexico City in a big, big, big town with a lot, a lot, a lot of people. We are millions here in this city. Um, we live in a valley and then um, uh, this city is uh, has a lot of things. Uh, I love uh, Anders what he's going to do tomorrow because here we can do it. <laughs> <laughs> we can do it here because we didn't have snow. And uh, but we have a lot of museums. If sometime you come here, you will come here. You you can go every day to one museum we, because we have a lot of them. And um, uh, well, I am a kindergarten teacher, but I uh, um, start to studying about technology in my master degree, and um, I. Um, was uh, the president of the Mexican Society of Computers in in Mexico. Uh, the name is SOMECE, S-O-M-E-C-E. -E. And um, I uh, I coordinate a group of a lot of, uh, of uh, teachers. We are so, um, so near because we are friends from a long time ago when we were in SOMECE. And um, we we have a group named Educreativos. And with this uh, group, uh, we uh, organize since 2009 uh, Scratch Day. This, uh, to, this year is going to be our 10 uh, years uh, organizing Scratch Day. Um, the, the the last year was in the museum of the children museum, the Papalote Children Museum, and it was a, so um, a good experience to be invited to make our scratch day there. Uh, this year we're going to be in the Las Ayas School. It's a colegio Las Ayas. It's in Jalapa, Veracruz. It's a town with a lot of um, trees and uh, a lot of fog. And uh, it's a beautiful uh, place. Um, and in this school, we're going to have our scratch day this 2018. And uh, we welcome you oh, thank for you. this. Thank you. Good. Is anybody else joining, Luisa? I think we can start. Okay. Uh, and there are some persons that say that we will arrive later, but yeah. I think we could start. Okay. 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 So my name is Claudia Scaff, and uh, I uh, work at the uh, University of North Florida. Sorry, is... she's Brazilian. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. I'm yeah, I'm from Brazil. First of all. <laughs> And uh, I moved here a, a while ago, I would say a long time ago. I got my uh, master's degree in fine arts in graphic design. After getting my bachelor's degree in Sao Paulo, Brazil, in industrial design. So uh, uh, industrial design in Brazil that time in the 80s, late 80s, was um, unless you have a lot of money that you can uh, sponsor your own ideas. Uh, it was a very tight and small group of people that were able to have jobs. So I, you know, it's I work in the industry there for a while, but um, uh, I felt like a graphic design uh, would be a, a better, more um, let's see, it, it's more open, uh, more diverse to the you know to be able to even you know find a job or you know i never thought about teaching so i came here got my masters and uh, and then a professor asked me if i could come and teach for him and i couldn't believe first of all my english wasn't very good and i never thought before 
And this was for me amazing, amazing opportunity. I thought, no, you're you're calling the wrong person. I was in Brazil. He was calling me asking, no, we would like you to come and teach. So that was uh, an amazing opportunity. And and after this, this is history. I mean, I've been teaching for 18 years now, and I couldn't think about a better job than this. It really kind of uh, giving back to to the society, giving back. You know, and 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 I feel like um, as a Veronica, as as just like you too, kind of um, trying to make a difference, right? And uh, and one thing is, uh, you know, working in an office space and talking to your to your uh, coworkers, but um, uh, and that's it. And I felt that uh, in the school environment, you know, the the changing, the moving. Um, so every semester, new group. Uh, I was looking at how many students we have in our majors, like 80 now, and you know we accept 20 students every semester. So it's really dynamic. So uh, it's a challenge, but it's dynamic. And sometimes you hate your students. <laughs> few, right? There's always the few ones. But you know when you see um, them doing so so many amazing things it's uh it's just just amazing it, this, this is what uh, is really worth it so uh, um university of north florida it's in jacksonville florida is a town i would say maybe uh, a little less than a million uh the the population little less than a million people here we have a um what else? We have the ocean, and we have a lot of rivers. So we have a whole one big river. So it's a it's known as one of the biggest cities uh, in the U.S. by land, in land, because we have the river on one side, we have the ocean, and uh, so we are really trapped there. So it's really nice. Uh, we are two hours from Orlando which sometimes, uh, and the fact that the ocean is right, uh, you know, 10 minutes from my house, it's a problem when you see the distraction, the potential distractions that our students have. When you are teaching and you see students looking at the, the surf to see if it's the good time to get out of a class <laughs> because the waves are very big and they said no you're not doing that <laughs> anyway so um present some challenges that i never had at the iowa state university which was in the midwest uh snow a lot of snow cross country and uh, and i think uh, they have the students at Iowa State, they had more of a tendency to uh, um, to work harder, honestly, or maybe it's just a, a problem with generation. You know, at 18 years ago, difference from now, you know, difference. It's a huge difference, I've noticed too. So I don't know if it is a, a generation or the environment as well. But just, just, just to show, uh, let me do the introduction, visual introduction of the the university. So I'm talking as well. I am showing. So let me get my cursor here and share. Share. Mm. Screen share. Oh no, you're still doing this now. I don't want to share you. I want to share the other. Yeah, this one. Let's see if uh, it goes. So anyway, the the place is no, it didn't work. It's, okay, here, share. The place. Uh, this is the the building where I work. The um, all the graphic design. Uh, our program is called graphic design and digital media. Are you? Can you see that? Are you seeing the? Okay. Thank you. Yes. Then um, you have, um, it's also in a nature, uh, surrounded by nature, and uh, it's um, a nature preserve. So for us to build any 
any uh, buildings there, we have to get permission because you see alligators, <laughs> you see deer, you see uh, a lot of snakes because, you know, it's Florida. So it's, it's beautiful. It's a very beautiful uh, campus. Uh, we have about, uh, let me see, I believe it's, we are in the 15, between 15, 16,000 students at the university. Let me see, you know, we have a, a lake. Uh, this is the facility where the, the games happen. Let's see. Oh, this is where the students, the, the student dorms with a lazy river. Can you believe? <laughs> so can you see the distraction here? Yeah. So this inside is inside of the campus. Yeah, it's <laughs> inside the campus. Yeah. Um, so let's see what any other images that would be worth showing. So that's that's really uh, what what it is. We have uh, our program is. Um, we call the digital uh, graphic design and digital media. We have a big change in the program was uh, multimedia, et cetera. But we felt like this was a better name because our students leave the, the school with the skills to uh, do not only web if they want, but packaging. So they can work in a print industry or in a digital media industry. So even animation, they can. So it's not specialized. Uh, it's really more uh, giving an overview as well as, uh, you, know, you know, heavy projects on specific techniques and technologies. So when they leave, they can make a decision what, what they want to do. So this is, yeah, so few images of the, of the university here. So uh, let's see. Uh, Eloisa asked me if I could uh, talk about the project. The right? That's right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, yes. so this is. Let me show you. So this, the whole thing started as the students. Uh, 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 yes. Could you please uh, slow down? Explain how. Is your course what uh, is the curriculum normally for these yeah. students? And then introduce what you've done to show the difference, please. Okay, so uh, usually our classes have uh, uh, some setup projects. So uh, if, if the student is in um, uh, introduction to web, they learn some of the coding, they learn uh, user interface, uh, user experience. So they have that, uh, or if they are in publication, is really focused on uh, designing magazines and books and um, um, magazine books, uh, annual reports, catalogs. So anything that has multiple pages. Uh, there is a class on illustration, uh, class, so it, it's a very diverse. So each professor, so we have a, a variety of uh, uh, courses that, uh, you know, with the idea that students will live with uh, well-rounded. However, the one class before they take portfolio, portfolio would be their last class, um, they have a chance to work on projects that um, are needed for uh, that they haven't uh, worked yet on, they hadn't had the chance, or maybe when they had the chance, their projects weren't good enough. So they come, I tell them, it's, so it's very, it's an open, pretty open semester they have to come up with uh, two proposals for the whole semester and um, and i have to uh, approve the proposals they have to design the timeline i do establish two deadlines for each of them so one in the middle of the semester is for project one and one is at the end of the semester for project two 
So by doing that, I'm giving a, um, I'm putting responsibility on their shoulders because they have already learned this in previous classes. So it's a way for them to um, practice that kind of um, mentality. So when they graduate, even if they want to have their own business, they can start um, organizing their time and their projects. They wouldn't have a professor helping them. They would have to do on their own. So by being there for them at this stage, I feel that I felt that was a good a good transition too. So they write a proposal, they write um, you know the objectives of the project and how this project will add uh, something to their skills and qualifications as well as um, if it's lacking in their portfolio. So, so put the, the, the responsibility on them. Of course, all these proposals come to me. I need to read, I need to approve before they start. If I think the timeline is not good, they have a lot of uh, work in class. I go back and say, no, revise. I want a checkpoint. I want to check and see what you are developing, how, um, how much you have uh, done, because if you don't check, they will not do it. Sadly, in the university environment, still procrastination is a big challenge. So you need to keep checking. Um, and after this, uh, you have, they have about eight weeks to accomplish the project. So it's eight weeks for one project, eight weeks for the second project. Uh, they have to give presentations in class. That is one of the class, classes, one of the final classes before presentations they give, they have to present to the whole class uh, for a critique. And that critique will help them, you know, tune up, improve a little details, hopefully just details before the, class, the project is due. And then when the project is due, they give another presentation. So uh, I'm going to show you. So, OK, good introduction of the project. How is, is it OK? Any yes, questions yes. about this? No? Right, right. OK, so let's go to the project. So every semester, the every semester, let me say, every, am I here? No, let's see how we do this. Mute, no, it's mute. Let's change this, the share. OK, every semester, uh, I have many nonprofit organizations and for profit organizations that approach us asking for an intern, or they ask if we could use their projects in our classroom. And, you know, with graphic design, digital media, they look at us and say, oh, it's going to be free. You know, it's, uh, we are nonprofit organizations. So that's the best way that we can do this is, uh, you know, see if they can do that for us. However, when they approach us, usually we already have everything set. We have our project set. And um, so every semester happens and we are piling up those projects and talk to them and say, maybe next semester, maybe next semester. So this one came to me and said, OK, we need an intern because we need a new website. And for us, internship is um, they need to have uh, someone above my intern that is uh, that has experience in design that can help this student. 
if they don't have anybody that can help the student with the skill the student is learning, then it's not an internship, it's a part-time job. So when she came to me and said, as she said, no, I don't have any experience. So I said, oh, this is not going to be an internship. This is going to be a part-time job, or maybe I can bring this to the classroom. So when she told me about the organization, I, I fell in love. I thought that this was really an amazing organization and was just new, brand new. And I felt like I need to bring this to class and, and suggest or uh, offer this as an opportunity for students to take on and see maybe this will be a pro project one or project two in their semester. So I didn't make this a mandatory. I didn't bring that project and say everybody needs to work on it. I gave as an option. So they came to my class and they presented. And, uh, and right there, four students were excited about it. And they said, okay, we are doing this. Can we do this as uh, in team? Yep. So to have as a four members in a team working for one organization, this project needs to be much more than just a website. I want this as a system and I need you guys to work um, in a way that you're working on things that you need for your portfolio. So if two students really want to work on web, so they work on the web because that's what their interests lay, lie on. And they don't have a lot of websites to show in their portfolio. If the other students want to do more print, so that's what we are going to do. So the organization came to me asking just for the website. And I asked, so what else do you need? What else do you have? Oh, we have a logo. And we have this business card. When I saw it, I said, no, you need everything. You need the branding. You need the whole branding. You're just new. And uh, how, how open are you to even change the logo if necessary? And she said, whatever you want to do, put together, show us the proposal, and we'll see what we're going to do. So it was wonderful because she was very open. And I made this, I told the students, you need to find uh, the, the opportunities, the problems this organization has. So giving you a little background of the organization, they, um, they deal with cancer patients and cancer, the, and the cancer family, the, the family members on tasks and um, tasks that becomes that were very small tasks but become a big deal when a person uh, is under treatment so from uh, a meal to uh, walking the dog or to um, let me see what else they have a family needs to move from one apartment to another. So, you know, when one person, you know, the kid is in treatment, the whole family stops life because someone has cancer. So this organization, that's what they do. It's like those little things, even like uh, cut the grass, take care of the yard. It's, of course, it's not uh, an organization that creates dependence. It's just for a time, you know, a period of time. And, uh, and that's one of the things that I felt was very unique was because this, to me, was something different from all the other organizations, cancer organizations, that they offer a big chunk of money and tell the family, you know, deal with it. They don't understand that the cancer patient, uh, why they are in chemotherapy, they, they, their palate is different. The, the, the food doesn't taste the same. 
and that maybe someone making a, a, a amazing meal will be uh, much more beneficial and makes the, the life better, a little happier. So I fell in love with the proposal of this organization. And, and I felt like if my students are not going to do it, I'm going to do it. So they did it. And we, and of course, they got the, you know, me as kind of, I would, I don't want to say art directing, but someone that was guiding them to, through the whole process. Um, what do I want to say about this? The four students that were involved in this project, one, I, one, one of them, um, in the past, show, show, you know, had problems with uh, anxiety and depression, with um, you know, take, you know, missing classes because of um, the way she she was feeling. So that's that's something. The other, let me see, uh, one other student, always super uh, airheaded, you know, but never getting things on time. So there were some challenges within the group, which I think putting them, to, there was one that was always, it's always been very responsible. And this one became, I told her, you're going to be the supervisor. You're going to be the 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 one that is organizing and talking to the client and talking to me, showing things and making sure that everybody's working. And so having kind of in a group setting, um, putting tasks or uh, putting um, a job, establish a job for each of them that they are responsible for was a good thing too because then they know who to blame <laughs> so the supervisor didn't do the job or so by that is another another thing that i notice uh, works well um any problems in the process of course there is always problems in the process especially if uh, it's a group setting there is always that one that's not, it's going to wait until the last minute to show product, to show progress. Um, and the other one becomes frustrated. But you know what? I see still this as a great uh, opportunity for them to see what is in the real world. Because when they graduate, they're going to have co-workers that are going to show the same kind of uh, skills or attitudes so no matter what there is it's always a positive experience that's my my view on that the client involvement um based on my previous experiences I don't have the client involved in the process. Basically, the client to me, to my classes, uh, it's more like a case study. They come with the problem and then let's us solve the problem in eight weeks. And then we invite the, the, the client again to the presentation. So that way, we don't have two people on their heads telling what to do. Let me do that. I am the one supervising the class. Let me uh, guide them. And uh, of course, they contact the client uh, during those eight weeks to get, for example, um, the material to put on the website, the text or photos, if they had photos. So they need content from the client. And that's something that was needed and they did. In fact, even the written content of the whole thing, the students put together, which wasn't even their responsibility. So uh, they went above and beyond with this. So the organization has two directors. They are, uh, one had the PR experience, the other one is more social worker. And the, the founder 
of the organization is a businessman who has um, um, a pizza place that is branching out. Even Orlando, Gainesville, they are being they're famous now. And he didn't want to be. Uh, he didn't want to have uh, that relationship. He didn't want people to think that V for Victory had his name. He, he wanted to be outside of this. He wanted the directors to be in charge. But no matter what, he's still the head and he's still the one making those decisions. So when we finished the project, we invite everybody, we invite the, the founder, Paul, and the two directors. Paul couldn't come, the directors came, watched the presentation. They were crying by the end of the presentation. <laughs> they were so amazed and happy. Uh, they said, no, we need, we need to have Paul here involved or you know, watching this. Uh, and by the way, just a, a, a little background on Paul. He started the fo this foundation, this organization, because his five-year-old boy has leukemia, and he had to go through this experience um, and felt like he couldn't do anything. And that's kind of how the whole idea of uh, doing those small tasks came. And having a pizza place is a good thing because he makes, he asks the uh, people in the pizza place to make meals for cancer patients, for the kids, for adults. And, um, and we, they have people delivering, the volunteers delivering. Hello, someone else here? Yes. yes. This is Simon from Kansas. I'm so happy. He's here now. Hi, Simon. He's, he's, a Hi, graphic, he's a designer, too. Oh, good. Oh, that's so cool. So nice to meet you guys. He's nice a very young, active boy who's doing amazing work in Tanzania. And he, I, I, I thought that he should uh, yes. hear this this story how you manage this and with the students and how you use it, your abilities your knowledge and your profession mm -hmm. yeah yeah so so, so uh, simon tell me tell us uh, what do you do yeah Talk is yeah. <laughs> please introduce yourself. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so um, um, I what's I am I am a STEM educator, and uh, for the past year I've been working on uh, STEM education programs that empower women and young girls here in Tanzania through a program called She Codes for Change. So we've been teaching them how to use science, technology, to gain confidence and speak about their ideas um, to the community. And so um, also, uh, because I'm a graphic designer, uh, we've been working on a few um, projects that involve coding. Uh, we've worked on, a, I, I think you've heard of Susan's Tattoo Stitch, Susan and the Tattoo Stitch program. So we've been working with local designers, graffiti artists, just to teach them how to code different patterns. Yeah, and so um, that is that's sort of the work I've been doing um, in Tanzania. Good, good. I think you both have many things to exchange. Yeah, yeah. So um, let's see, where can I, okay, so where am I? So we already finished the, the process, right? So we're going through the, the final, because I want to show you. Uh, uh, finally, you not, uh, may you summary what you have said, or you want me to, to do yeah. it for you? Or? 
Yeah, well, so, so we can time. follow. Yes. So, so Simon, just just to uh, summarize this is um, a project that I brought to class to the classroom. Um, that was that is a for a nonprofit organization, and uh, which four students were uh, involved. They decided to take on the project, and um, you know, and dealing with me as the supervisor, like the, the director, art director, but showing to the client at the end. So the students were not only taking what the client wanted, but also were involved in to find what the client needed. So they started as a website, they just wanted a website, and then uh, we, you know, they figure out, we figure out together that uh, uh, this the, the organization need much more than that. So, uh, so the students put together, so there were eight weeks working on this, uh, client was not involved in the process unless needed, such as to give content or photos, and um, and that's it. So what the 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 few challenges were related to uh, team dynamics, right? And uh, always one one person that wouldn't do the job or you know wait until the last minute. Uh, and other challenges uh, were that uh, the client wouldn't provide the content, so they had to come up with their own content, and um, and, and and deadlines that they set up for themselves. The last deadline is the one I set up for them because see, the project needs to be done by this day. This day is the day of presentations, and that's the day we are bringing the client here to the classroom to watch what you have to offer, what we have to offer. Yeah, good summary? Yeah, yeah. Okay. and how old were they? Maybe you could say a, a little bit about the organization. Uh, what are the proposals, the objectives of the... Yeah, so uh, Simon, you probably get those uh, requests so uh, non-profit organizations coming and asking for free design all the time yeah. and I, I don't mind I don't mind uh, but I mind um, but it, it, I, I interview them first to see which one I'm gonna I'm going to uh, um, take and that one when I ask what makes your organization different from the other cancer organizations and they said we do everything that nobody wants to do. So basically, uh, other organizations would give um, maybe uh, funds for the settlement, or like uh, I know one organization did six thousand dollars for a family, yeah. and uh, and deal with it. But those little things, such as um, walking the dog or a meal that is not the meal that you're cooking every day and chemotherapy is you can't deal with that meal because you are you know you, you, your chemicals are not the same um, so they do those little things and they have the high schoolers around the florida around here jacksonville involved on those uh, to become volunteers they have uh, us. I mean, I've I've done some driving around pizza and delivering too. So, whatever they uh, whatever it's needed. So the high schoolers sometimes they go there. They help moving families from one place to another, or uh, walking dogs, taking care of cats when you know the the lady is uh, has to be in the hospital for a few days. So, you know, they do those little things that, um, you know, you don't see other organizations doing. You know, they have and here Meals on Wheels. So it's just Meals on Wheels. But they don't have someone that will do the your yard work for, et cetera. So that's, 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 the, that's the foundation of the organization. So I thought, no, this is really cool. I mean, we need to do it. We need to do something about this. And uh, how old are you? 
and the 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 founder of the organization uh his son is under treatment uh he has a son that has a, a leukemia leukemia and um and that's kind of how the whole organization started but he also owns um, many business around so he didn't want to be involved and the one thing he is very uh, proud of saying is all the money that go to the organization goes to organization it, the the two directors that they have uh the their salaries come out of uh, the founders pocket the founders that have their own business He's super proud that every cent goes back to the community. And that is, you know, here in the US is a big problem with um, um, trying to get money out of um, the organizations and who, you know, like providing meals to the founders or to the directors. That's not how they're doing. So we took on this project and um so that is about the organization the four students the challenges with the students and uh, and at the end when they presented to the two directors they said that we need to present to the to the founder as well and and see how he's going to react they didn't want to tell me anything about the founder but the founder is this uh, imagine a, a you know he is like he he thinks like uh, he's a money guy number guy he is um he's quick and um and according to the director too he doesn't give money he doesn't give a, it, it, it's a very he's very stingy <laughs> um and they were a little concerned about his reaction, especially with the change in the branding, the logo. But no, he loves that logo. I don't know how he's going to react. So semester was over. They call me. Can, can the, the students present to Paul, to the founder? Let's do it. So we had, uh, we had that presentation too so uh, the students not only so they we divided i divided students in two so we, there was a group of four two students want to focus on web for their portfolio two students want to focus on print so i divided them so the two students work together on the website and motion piece and a little motion too and the other two students uh focus on all the printing materials, such as uh, poster, um, handouts, brochures, um, little, I think was um, buttons, so little gadgets that can be given away to that is like a, a proud sponsor of a V for Victory. That's the name of the organization. So showing now, enough of looking at me let's look at the project <laughs> okay so uh -da -da, screen share let's go and share okay so just a little thing about uh, them so here you see the students um this is paul the guy on the background and me yeah this is paul and those are the two directors and then this one is student here so you were asked about the age maybe age group and the, where are they in the program so this is a senior level class right now they are taking portfolio and by the end of the semester hopefully they are going to graduate so this is Megan, who I put her as a supervisor of the group. Those two work on web. This student and this one work on print pieces. So you see that Paul is happy, right? 
This is my and the children <laughs> have as well. <laughs> this is to be very proud and very happy with the results. Yeah, that's yes. very important. <laughs> yeah, and and you can see. I mean, I uh, when we present, when you, they give a class presentation, they also have to dress up. They dress uh, as a business casual, so it's a good practice to uh, to the real world. They have to do this. So uh, you have here. Uh, you have uh, them presenting. So I was taking, the, she's presenting the print piece here in the middle of the table. Uh, here, oh, here's the process. This is me <laughs> when they are presenting like a in-class process. So they're showing me their uh, website and the print, everything is in front of me. And we are just uh, discussing, talking about ways to improve their pieces. So let's see here. Yeah, and more photos here. So you, sh you can see here, Simon, their thumbnails. This is early in the process, thumbnails of the project. So you have the brand, some uh, layout for their uh, website too. Anything else? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we are here. Uh, and so here. And this is Paul paying attention to the <laughs> to the presentation and and at the end. So just to show you the project itself, this is what they presented the day of the presentation. So they have to put together a presentation that goes with um, introduction. So the touch points, what they were going to uh, work on. And animating the logo, Facebook header icon. So also the social media was important. Nowadays, you have to have the social media uh, element into the projects too. Website, mobile, that would be uh, responsive. So it would be mobile, tablet, and desktop. Um, the layout would be for all three. You have here, that's something we do, is a mood board. The mood board uh, showcase uh, what is what are the colors that you see the organization, what are the images that translate the the mission or the feel of the organization. So all those things they put together. We call the mood board also typeface choices. Everything is in one slide. So this is a good is a good way because. Uh, with four students, if they have this mood board together, make sure they 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 have a consistency, and uh, they have something to follow. So the logo, this is the new logo. I should I should bring the V for Victory, the first logo, so you can see the difference. So here, the whole idea was V for Victory. You have not only the the, the abstract translation of uh, the the cancer symbol, right, with the ribbon. You also have uh, so it's upside down. So you have the upside down, but it makes a V. So you have a V. You have an upside down ribbon. You also have like two hands, kind of a abstraction of two hands coming together. Um, the colors were chosen as uh, uh, yes, something yes. warm. Uh, you know, when we are doing the research on all the ribbons and the colors, there is there are colors for every kind of cancer, but we didn't see those two colors for any cancer, and we wanted to have something that was more general, something that uh, wouldn't say this is for victory is just for X Y Z kind of cancer. So uh, more open, more uh, and and works in black and white, and white on black. This is uh, the web. the The face would be the Facebook uh, page. So you have the V for Victory. A little design here showing the mules. So someone holding the silverware to show. Yeah, we we can cook, and on the other side is we can also 
tools for this, you know, from fixing things, taking the dog for walk. So you have the things that uh, they they do. So kind of go along with their mission. Then the website, a mock-up of the website. So you have the uh, homepage. So you can see that, uh, you know, the same version in the tablet as well is in the, on a phone. And then you have the publication. So um, business card, letterhead, the, for example, when they, they want to give a thank you, a certification of recognition of uh, members that have been helping a lot so you have the layout the design for the you know to put on your wall because you've been recognized by the organization a little thank you card uh, this is something i'm still working with with them because they want to put this in the pizza uh, on the tables of the pizza place and i think it's just too much uh it occupies too much space on the on the table we we are changing this we are changing this so uh the brochure and what is interesting is that they they have two two things going on one is um, a pamphlet for the volunteers and a pamphlet for uh, business owners that want to provide their services so one is the volunteer as a person volunteering and uh, driving cars or uh, cleaning etc and the other one is uh, finding business that want to participate in this in this organization so if i have uh, a air conditioning kind of business and i want to uh, a, 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 you know, air conditioning the place uh, broke and they don't have any money can they not donate the whole thing, but give us for the cost of the the, the, the normal cost of the, the machine? So they would uh, not be, they still have, they, they're not giving money, they're giving their discount. So there's like different ways of partnership. So would maybe call partnership. Mockups for t-shirts and um, bins and tags and uh, let's see what else we have here yeah so the teenagers especially teenagers love that and in the u.s teenagers need volunteer hours to be able to go to college and to prove that they volunteer 100 hours to get to be able to have access to uh, maybe scholarships so uh, they teenagers can wear those things and um, when they're volunteering or you know just to promote the organization uh, this is the competition and that's something that they need to show too so what exists now uh, that is our website is our branding better than what the competition has to offer so they put together, uh, let's see, one, two, three. So it's, you have Make-A-Wish, Cap, and Candle Lighters. And each one has a different, uh, maybe a different mission. But you can see the colors, you know, have the blue and some oranges and yellows and green. Uh, and then they end up the presentation with uh, future, uh, future recommendations as... Um, they didn't code the website. They uh, had uh, a little program there, the Adobe uh, X, that they can uh, pretend, you know, you can click on links and, and open almost like a website. Uh, so they gave I'm the. I'm that I that I people. people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so they didn't they didn't code the website because it wasn't the the, the main idea was the design and uh, and Paul this the founder has uh, a lot of contacts and people in California that can do the coding for them so that was great 
uh, have the website automatically organize all the information, volunteers and business input into the forms, create a book for V for Victory, organize the binder. So there were a few things that say, okay, so what are the future recommendations? What do you see that still need to happen? And, and this is the, the new V for Victory, caring, warm, friendly. That's another mood board that came later. Uh, so you see here the warmth, uh, like giving hope, the hands, the mood board here. So you have those two that wasn't presented before. So that's it, right? Wrapping up, that Is was the- correct on there, Claudia? Sorry? You have already published it, it's on website? It's in the internet? No, it's not. Because not the other one, they, they contact us and said, there is another, and I knew there was another V for Victory. But they oh, didn't okay. think that the V for Victory, and, and, and they also deal with cancer. Uh, oh. Now it's changed to V for Victory, um, and there is another subtitle there. So now, the client came back to us saying we need to change everything. <laughs> we are so happy about no, not really. So it's um, it's part yeah. of the real world, isn't it? Yeah. So they need, they need, they need and and but we they already made the changes and uh, and hopefully uh, they can publish this and have the website up and so forth. So. Um, that's it. I mean, this is what happens. They present it to the client. I already gave their grades back and I already make, uh, made uh, some uh, suggestions of uh, things to improve, which needed. So maybe the, you know, uh, there is a need for more consistency. Uh, I, I'd like to, to, to open now for questions, since we are running out of time, uh, but I, I'd like to open for questions and consider suggestions. Um, who wants to start? Veronica. Yes. Okay, Claudia. Um, I was so um, I was enjoying this this session because my son is graphic design designer. Then um, I know about uh, what are you talking about because I look all around the years when he was studying and the challenges they need to have and how to use the the tools. For, for all the graphic designers. When he started uh, a long time ago, he only used PowerPoint. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and now, well, um, now he works in Adobe and he is um, the, represent, uh, the, the graphic designer representing Adobe in Mexico. And uh, I know a lot of, of tools you have now Mm -hmm. But but I uh, I I'm was um, wondering, not only the tools made the things, the tools make the things happen when you have the creativity and you have the hard work and you have the push and you have the challenges mm -hmm. all around it. If you don't have it, the tools can do nothing. Uh, what do you think about? Veronica, this is something that I... Uh, I try to tell, I mean, I tell the students, when you saw the, the process, you saw that everything started on a pencil and paper. I don't let them go to the computer right away. I mean, the computer, they use the computer to uh, do visual research, to see what is out there, so they don't do the same thing. They use the computer to, um, let me see what else they do there. They, uh, in the early stages, to put the mood board together, but what you saw here, and see here, uh, is the whole process. I mean, you see this. The computer, the technology is there just to help them accomplish what they want in a f uh, faster than it was in the past. 
that in the past we would have to cut pieces of paper and glue them with uh, uh, rubber cement and, um, and and it was you know type consuming the computer i i see of course as uh, you know especially your your son being the adobe representative is uh, you know they can it can do a lot open a lot of uh, um, doors for us but it's not i mean they don't and we say we can't rely on the computer for you to be creative it goes it goes beyond that you have, you know, and that's why we always start with the thumbnails. Thumbnails as a, as a way of um, a brainstorm of images. If you go, and, and you know, Veronica, many times what you see on the piece of paper and they try to translate the same design to the, uh, with uh, using all the Adobe products, sometimes it loses. It loses the natural, the organic approach that the paper and pencil had. Of course, now with Adobe products, you can have add texture, and uh, so it becomes more organic. Everything is more organic, but uh, everything starts with the piece of paper. Also, um, the other thing we we try to tell the students is that if you are in a client meeting. I mean, you are in a restaurant with the client, and you you can you have the ability to sketch up a logo or a design quickly on a napkin if needed. You know, you're not gonna have the InDesign, Illustrator, Photoshop in front of you to do all this. Of course, you have. I mean, nowadays you have a lot of apps that you can design on your own phone, the, the screen of your phone. But the whole idea is that the, the the ideation process is heart and brain, and then your hand. If your hand goes to the mouse, or if the hand goes to the piece of paper, you know, it's however. However, is uh, you know, however, it works for you. Yeah. Okay. Yes, this, this is uh, real because Educreativos has a logo, and it was made in a uh, in a piece of paper in the restaurant. And this is uh, the real meaning is what is inside you. Exactly. Thank exactly. you very much. Thank you very much. Welcome. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Uh, I do have one. Yes, yeah. go on. Yeah. Um, so, Cla Claudia, I really like the, the fact that you're taking students through the whole organic process of uh, sketching and thinking about uh, what you're going to do the, on the computer before they do on the computer. Because I think that's one of the things that in design, that's one of the things people are running away from nowadays. Um, but I, I want to understand because uh, the skill level that these students are, are they taking design Simon, class? Uh, uh, and Simon, this please, oh. a little bit slower, speak, because it's yeah. cutting. Could you please ah, okay. speak a little bit slower? Thank yeah. you. It's cutting. All right. Um, I just wanted to understand if uh, the student, the skill level of the students, do they begin the project one when they already know the process of designing when they know how to use the software uh, or uh, do they learn all this through the activity that the client needs okay they uh they are senior level students so to understand the, the our program the first year they take uh, the technology the drawing one drawing two they take um, what else an art history so they take a lot of foundation classes first and then they take the one course called the basic computer images in this class they learn the basics of photoshop and design and illustrator yeah. Then, so this is like the, the, the raw tools. Then they take a class called Introduction to Graphic Design. That is like in the, the third semester. And yeah. that's when they, they apply into our program. They submit a portfolio. And we decide 
which students have the potential to succeed in the program. So the okay. students that you saw here, and the you know they are ready to graduate. So they already went through the whole process. They were uh, selected. They were um, so they already have the knowledge of uh, the the technology or like basics. So uh, this the the D uh, she really likes motion. So she developed and I don't I don't have the motion piece here with me, but she developed a motion piece because that's the area she wants to focus on as well as print. Uh, those two students want to focus on web. So they take yeah. those classes as mandatory classes too, because this provides them knowledge of what is out there as a graphic designer. And then yeah. the last year or in the now they are in my class in portfolio. Now we are making, we are hel helping them develop their portfolio based on what they want to do after graduation. So if they want to focus on web and motion, they don't even need a print portfolio. Why to put print pieces there if that's not what you want to do? So it's yeah. a very customized class as well, the, the portfolio. So they are, they were like a one semester to graduate. Okay, that is really nice. Uh, because one of the programs, uh, She Codes for Change, that I'm consulting with, uh, yeah. they are working with uh, ITU, uh, which is like the International Telecommunication Union and UN Women um, to design an employability skills boot camp, which is going to be one one week for African girls. Um, and one of the biggest tasks that we have is to design curriculum that is going to empower these girls with skills like coming up with logos. Um, and so I was wondering if this could be squeezed into one week. <laughs> for people, especially for girls who do not understand, who have never used a computer before, you know, yeah. but maybe they have the talent to draw. Yeah, it, it just that's it. I think it's uh, the ideas yeah. come with the drawings. You know, you, you, you get okay. the drawings there, and then, you know, in one week, too, uh, it's hard to put this together. Uh, maybe the drawing is really more of an exercise of uh, uh, creativity than anything else. That's good. I was more to see. Um, you can help us uh, think about this curriculum better. I think. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. We can, we can. Uh, I can share my curriculum too and see. But the the students you're talking about, they are. What's the la What are they? Which so uh, the idea. The, the idea is that we get young girls between sixteen to nineteen years old. Yeah from different countries. And I think they're gonna have a, a beginner level experience using the computer, uh, but they would have an interest in art and drawing. So we need to teach them how to use these skills to get employability um, skills, or even to be able to make a business out of it. And I think this design class is um, something they could do. Okay, so uh, do you so so here in the U.S. we have something that is uh, it's called the AIGA is uh, the Organization for Graphic Designers. Let's see, AIGA uh, Jacksonville, and they have something going on that is uh, they take high schoolers. Yeah, and um, Jacksonville ligature. Let me see if I can get. Uh, Night, yeah, no cocktails and creatives. They have um, something going on, and those are my uh, former students that are doing um, that are part of this. They have they got the high schoolers to uh, and they do something like this that is uh, uh, helping them. I mean, it's in a, a, a nine, 16, 19 years old. And uh, I believe they bring like a nonprofit organizations, but they have, they use, is a, is a series, is like a once a week, I think they meet and they, yeah. uh, and, but they meet in our labs, the, our computer labs. 
So they start with the same process as I was talking, with the thumbnails, etc. And then they go to the computer and they have always a tutor, which is a former student, uh, with them, mm -hmm. helping them. Many of those high schoolers already have the knowledge of many of the software programs. So when they get there, they're already you know, doing some Photoshop, etc. But if they don't, the, there is a tutor that uh, that helps them as well. Okay. It's, it's interesting, this proposal of uh, working, uh, integrating yeah. uh, college people and uh, high school kids. It's both for both of them, I think. Yeah. Good idea, Claudia. Good idea. Yeah, I, I'm not... Um, I don't get involved on this one. Uh, I have another one. One of my colleagues is the co, is the chair of the the location chair of this uh, organization, and they put this together. And it's uh, they started last weekend, and uh, I think it's called Discover Design. Um, I'll, I'll find out what is, um, but it seems to be. Um, it's it's nice because my former student puts yes, and this was my my uh, mentoree. So they feel so proud of themselves when they see that they they did something uh, nice. It's like you yeah. know my my baby my baby is doing something so good, and I'm so proud of it. So uh, I think it's because Louisa, we we are dealing with them all the time. And giving the opportunity to the high, to the college students or the former, the new graduates to give back to the society, I think is a good is a good idea too. So that's something Simon to consider too, because I don't think it's one person thing. I think it's like bringing the community together to get this working. I think it can 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 be very nice. I think you, if you find the other links that were idea, you could put on the group. I will, I and will. And in the group also, we have the contacts. And if you want a direct mail, you can exchange it later. Uh, because I think you both have much in common. And, oh, it's great. I'm yeah. happy for that. Good, good, good. OK, any, any other questions? Others? No? Or comments? I, I think it's a, a nice project, but uh, I'm I'm not a designer myself, so... But uh, in eight weeks, yeah. did you do all that stuff in eight weeks? Yes, eight weeks. Okay, oh. <laughs> I'm yeah. impressed. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it's a. Uh, I mean, it it must be a hard work for for you as a teacher or a tutor. Mm -hmm. It it is, but it's it's a. Uh, it, it it will be. It's it's a. Uh, let me see. It's a training for the real world. We say eight weeks. You know, there are, you know, companies that they they get like a thousands and thousands of dollars for this kind of project, the, all these deliverables. And um, and there is, you know, a lot of people involved in the in the creation of the branding. You're you're very right. I mean, it's a very intense uh, eight weeks, maybe not enough. Eight weeks is what, uh, you know, one of the classes core. Uh, it takes eight weeks to come up with the logo. It's not even the touch points. It's just the logo. And uh, but uh, they need to be efficient at this time. You know, four years later, after they enter into the, the you know the university, they need to um, um, to get things done. And uh, yeah, and and when they are showing uh, their their ideas 
the beginning ideas were not uh, very good and you know and okay back to the drawing board and you know draw more <laughs> and that's that's what it is but there is a time and there's that we say okay we need to make a decision because we have a deadline and that's yeah. what they're gonna have to do in a real world with um, deadlines and if they don't have things ready they are gonna lose their client yes i think that's a, a really good idea you have you have to work for the deadline you couldn't wait uh, until uh, one week uh, to the deadline you must do it all the time uh-huh exactly yeah yes and i think the most uh, besides this graphical work uh professional work i think you changed their lives you not only helped the, the organization by thinking in some way, you changed the lives of these students. We, we ho I hope so. In the beginning, she said, uh, Simon, that they uh, used to be students not motivated for classes, not uh, very absent, uh, not, uh, um, you know. And now you see their faces, you see that they have changed a lot. And they, they uh, I, as psychologists, I can say they, they have uh, improved uh, their self-esteem. They, as they knew that they are able to do that, even, <laughs> many, especially in this short time, how much energy, how much uh, good stuff they found in, inside us, their, themselves and, uh, and, and another very important thing, something that it's important, I try to, to teach to my, or, or pass to my students. When you're learning, it's not only for you. What are you going to do with this knowledge? You have to give it back to the society, to the humanity. It's not only for you. So I think in this matter, not only the graphic stuff that is wonderful. <laughs> I told you I want you to contract your service, <laughs> but the most important that this student is going to take for the rest of their lives. Uh, they they now can believe themselves and they can help to change this world for better. I think this is huge. I. And, and, and Luisa, if you ask me what's next, um, that's that's one thing I wanna I wanna focus on now. Is um, I wanna know uh, I uh, need to see if I can do that. But the effect, the effects of this into their mental health, honestly. I want to know if uh, this, I want to know if those, you know, or I know one of those students, one of those four students have the depression and, uh, and she, you know, misses classes too because of all the medication, etc. cetera. But, uh, and she felt very strong about helping this organization because she has uh, someone in the family had cancer, etc. So she felt, no, I want to do this. And I don't remember seeing her missing class during that process, you know. So my my question now, my questions now are: uh, is students that had some kind of has some kind of a, a mental issue, or uh, they when they start working with something that excites them, uh, or something that uh, they see that other people maybe have more or bigger problems or problems just like yours or bigger and that you can make a difference, would they, they stop thinking about themselves and being too introspective and, and feeling all the, you know, the anxiety and the depression, et cetera, because they don't have time for that because they are really focusing on something that is for the greater good. Um, 
does this help them? That's that's all I want to know. I want I I really uh, and and Anders and uh, Simon when um, when I talked to Louise about this in the past was uh, I started because my I I felt that uh, my students I I every semester I would have to count to call counseling. Uh, at the university and take almost like take the student to counseling and say that's it because they would be crying in my my office they they uh, uh and, and it could be from anxiety depression or someone that tried to commit suicide very close to the family and so so there's so many different things happening but um or the whole thing with medication, Eloisa, and no, no, they all be bipolar, or they all, they all, or they not not bipolar, but the uh, attention that that yes. yeah. because, and I think it comes with creativity, being creative, and I'm trying to really my the next thing for me, I, I'm, I, I would like, but I think I have to get my master's degree in psychology, Eloisa, so <laughs> I hope not, but is really uh, understand if uh, it's a it's a generation thing or and, and, and if it is a generation how to help that gen this generation how our projects how the class how can we do uh, better how can we get uh, them to stop thinking about their problems and and is it like a one one professor has a project on the happy project and the students have they design posters that make them happy you know is it the way to go or maybe is the other way to go and say people with you know uh, um, abuse you know sexual abuse etc so maybe dealing with more dramatic things so they will see oopsie so not only me have a problem so we can focus on someone else's problem and and they forget about the pro so this is this is the next thing for me i really uh trying to maybe put it yeah, together you know i i've been working with this for 15 years now <laughs> from, from literacy five years old to people who are taking their pgs yeah so i have a <laughs> a big uh, uh yes uh, as a matter of fact i i uh since we started uh discussing this topic it's not only technology because the things uh walk together we can separate the technology of the persons mm -hmm. uh so both things are important so um as much as people are interested in, I intend to give some, um, to talk, to make some sessions, to discuss it, to help uh, the teachers and educators in general with some clues, some tips, yeah. and some yeah. things about this in this way, because it's a, a multi-serial uh, factors stuff. It's not so simple. Uh, yeah. As you told, there are many factors that you have already listed, it, and there are yeah. so much more. So we have to know how to walk uh, in these different paths to really help students. Technology, robotics, and stuff, it's very important things, but just this is not going to solve the planet, is not going to help the humanity. So, do you want to talk something, Simon? Simon? No, it's <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, uh, we are finishing, <laughs> <We're> oh. <laughs> wrapping up. So I would like to thank you very much for your presentation, Claude, okay. sharing yeah, this okay. good result, very good results with us. I think it's something a lot of material to think about mm -hmm. and to teach us how we can make the difference with the students, no matter it's college or teenagers or 
yeah. three, four, or thousand of them. Yeah, they are. They need us very much. Yeah, and I think it, 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 even in those you said, oh, I'm not psychologist. I think, but you made it very right. Congratulations. I, I hope so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, nice to meet you all. The same. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. You guys have a, a good uh, weekend, right? And we have carnival here. Yeah. I've been carnival, some people right? carnival. Right? carnival. Right? carnival. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Okay. Okay. Good night. Uh, bye bye. Good, and good night. night for some yeah. of you. Good afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> bye bye. Good night to you. Yeah, good night. Ciao. Ciao. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye, bye Anders. See. Bye, Simon. Let me go out. Uh...